Hi, this is Keisha with Mocha in the Morning. We are sending our prayers and condolences to those who lost loved ones in the Sri Lanka Easter bombing. Hello and welcome to this week's mm. Mocha in the Morning. I am your host, Miss Keisha Boyd, and this is my fabulous co-host, officially Jorge, my cafe con leche. As you know, we have a great show coming up for you this great. Friday. Oh. I know. We have so many things, girl. We have, like, we're so super busy. You have your derby, like, coming yes. up. Which I hope everyone got their tickets. Yes, yes, right? yes. I'll be at the uh, Billboard Music Award. Yes. That's going to be, and then I'll be in New York for the Glad and Media Award, bringing you all that footage. All the footage. All honey. that footage, all the tea, all the <laughs> coffee all that good stuff. It's going to be an absolutely yeah, yeah. fabulous, fabulous weekend. But. First, coffee. Mocha in the Morning is brought to you in part by the Portico Cafe, where conversation, connection, and community create change. Three, two, one, drop! Keisha Boyd, and this is officially Jorge. Mm -hmm. And what do you mm. have steaming for us, honey? Okay, I got some good for us. Okay, let's go. Okay. So, um, Game of Thrones, right? You still yeah. not watching it? Mm -mm. I okay. will not go into the jail door. I'll Game move of Thrones. on. Oh. I'll move on. Okay. Um. Okay. So Michael Jackson continues to make news, and he will. Forever. Right. Well, they are working on a Broadway production oh, nice. of the thriller himself. Yeah, I will definitely travel to New York right. for that. Well, and some people are like, wait a minute, so you're still going to do it? You know, and the producers are like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, you know, it's New York, it's entertainment, it's Broadway. Mm -hmm. You know, those people don't like other people telling them what to do. Right. So, um, we'll see what happens with that. So, that was according to New York Times. Okay. So uh, I'm sure like, they're not going to beat it. And they better not skimp. You better make sure you have the right talent to represent Ooh, right. MJ. You, okay? you, you just better, can't be picking up anybody. Who's bad? Who's bad? Der. S. <laughs> bad S. The other thing is, <laughs> this is super exciting. I'm like, okay, we're we moving on now. Hey, to, to the east side. side. We finally <laughs> got a piece of the pie. Not to be confused with being gentrified. Um, well. Hello. Hollywood is doing a remake yes. of the Jeffersons, uh -huh. and they are going to select Jamie Foxx and Wanda Sykes. Oh, this you, should be good. Well, you know who Wanda Sykes is going to play. Of course. So I'm excited to see who else they're going to cast. Yeah. I mean, because, like, the Jeffersons is a pretty, like... Iconic I mean, show. Yes. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. and they, they were, like... I mean, that was, that was some times. Oh, yeah. You know, some times. And um, they already just break through mm -hmm. television, and they did things, you know, with that. And, of course, like, with Archie Bunker, all yeah. that kind of, like, spawned from that. I mean, so I cannot wait. Yeah, I think it's going to be they great. They better do it right. Yeah, I think Jamie and Wanda are so, a good fit for that. It'll be interesting to see if be, like, updated, or if are we going to keep that same kind of swagger? I don't know. Eh, but. We'll see. Speaking of. Yes. Mm. So, The Voice, our beloved Whitney Houston. Yes. Well, who's no longer with us. Right. Well, she had a friend named Robin Crawford. Yes. And, uh, like, to me, it, it always seemed like that was, like, her ride or die. Like, Robin was always there there from the jump. Yeah. Right? Right. Um, well, she's coming out with a book. Oh. Now, you see, I just recently kind of watched the, a Whitney Houston documentary, and I didn't realize that Sissy Houston... I was like, ooh, I didn't know she was that kind of, I mean. Yeah. She, she was, was something to deal with, honey. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. I always thought she was real like. No. But like, no. Oh, my goodness. Well, anyways, like you saw quite a bit of Robin Crawford in that particular documentary. Right. And, um, you know, she's like the one, the only one who hasn't really. Been out or spoken. Yeah, or said It's, it's going to be interesting to see what she has to say. Like, I'm really looking forward to seeing what yeah. she brings or says and. 
and and I pray that it's her authentic truth. Yeah, you know because I mean? the thing is, like you know, I don't think she's been um, the type of gal who's tried to capitalize correct off of what mm-hmm. happened with Whitney Houston kind of right. thing. It just seemed like she kind of faded to you know faded to black. Yeah, literally. <laughs> and, and now she's like, let me just now she's let me ready. Just, yeah. So I'm fine about that. No, of course. It'd be one of my audibles. That's gonna be the good stuff, girl. <laughs> we'll be right back with piping hot. Piping hot. Piping hot. Once again, I am your host, Keisha Boyd, and this is my co-host, Hi. officially Jorge, and it's time for Piping Hot, pipe, 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 pipe. and do we have some things mm. to talk about. Let's introduce our contributors, please. Yes. Well, we have Miss C of Black Women of the Year, entrepreneur, doctor, <laughs> Genevieve Dobson. How yes. are you, girl? <laughs> Hi. Hey, girl. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have... Are one of our most fabulous contributors, kicking it with <laughs> Kia Shakur. Hey, Kia girl. What's up, guys? Hey. hey. I'd like to welcome all of you to our 1992 Jade New Jack Swing reunion <laughs> tour. Yes, okay, yes. <laughs> yes, come yeah. through. <laughs> come through. <laughs> all right, so let's jump back, jump on in, rather, to these piping hot mm. topics for this Friday morning. Woo, did yes. you have some? So, starting yeah. with Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson signed a $140 million contract with the Seattle Seahawks with a $65 million bonus, signing bonus, making him the highest paid NFL player. Wow. So, basically, he's got a lot of goodies in his jar. Mm hmm. For the future. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, you guys are so petty. So petty. <laughs> I mean, it wouldn't be us if we were not petty, right? Just saying. I mean, I'm just it's happy. True. I'm like, I love the, the, okay, first of all, I love that. First of all, have you like just looked at him in the face? I have. So then we can move on. Okay. <laughs> and secondly, okay, I love the family picture of him yes. at the signing day with Sierra and their two boys. And I also can appreciate, or, you know, it, I'm mixed feelings on it, right? That he said, you know, told Sierra, basically, you can take future off of child's, you know, support because we don't really need his coins. We good. Right. Kia, what you think about that? Hey, man, if this is what happens when you wait before you get married to have sex with somebody, then I am all for it. If you get a signing bonus and all this other kind of magical stuff, then yay. But no, I think what he said is kind of making a point. We rarely see future with the kid anyway. So why is he paying child support? We don't need the money, so what's the point? I, I'm sorry, I'm on him. I'm, I'm with him on this. So, Jen? I'm on, I'm on Russell Wilson's side. And shout out to him having a sexy voice because we all thought he was a cornball with that weird little geeky <laughs> voice. But in real life, he sounded like a thug. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh my God, Kia. Jen. <laughs> I I love Russell. I love him. Um, I love what he had to say. Uh, I agree with him 100%. Like, they don't need that money. They don't, they don't need the hassle. You know, his, he treats Sierra like that is his forever love. And he's exactly. going to take her no matter what. And he, he's not worried about those little coins. And I don't blame him. So I hope that Future, like, recognizes, like, look, like, I need to step up and be a better father because I'm not even really relevant or necessary right now. So maybe and I should he just that. had... His, he just had his sixth or eighth child. I, I can't remember which number it is, but he just had that child a couple of days ago. Like, right. he was turning these babies out, Ooh. but he ain't turning out no music. Oh. So. Okay. Because there ain't no future in his music. Right. It's in no, the ma'am. past. It's in the past. I guess so. Okay. Okay. That coming through strong today. Yes. Now, <laughs> let's talk about, speaking of, you know, music and talking. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, Miss Ariana Grande, there's this debate and things going on, oh, right? Yeah, yeah, Talking yeah. about Coachella, Ariana Grande, Beyonce. So, apparently, they paid Ariana Grande $8 million to mm-hmm. perform at Coachella okay. and Beyonce 4 Right. However, However, it's important to understand 
that Beyonce is about her business because she owned all the rights. True. She can repurpose it so she can go and make this money with Netflix. Ta da. Because she made, what, $60 million on a three project deal with Netflix? Boom, hashtag. And the Homecoming album? Yes. So I don't think she's missing that $4 million. And the other thing that people also need to take note of is that Beyonce had an album called Lemonade. Yes. And Ariana Grande had a lemon thrown at, at her. her. Big difference. <laughs> Sorry, I can't take a part in the petty. Normally, I'm all down for the petty, but for this, this whole conversation just uh-huh. makes me so annoyed because we're putting these two amazing artists against each other. Neither one of their camps came out and said this. The people from Coachella haven't said this. This is coming from research from somebody else, but I'm not putting these two girls against each other or making it seem like one's better than the other or or the money means this or Beyonce's doing that. No, nah, both of these women are at the top of their game. They should be remain like that, and I'm not doing this. So y'all go ahead. I mean, yeah, it's not it's not about pitting them against each other. You know what I'm saying? It's just that's how it comes across, though. Like real talk, that's how it comes across. But from what well, everybody's yeah, talking from, about, yeah, Twitter. it's not it's not a competition of who's better. I think that people have this conversation. Of course, it's social media. People start these conversations, right? Because they want to say, oh, they value you know Ariana Grande better than they do a Beyonce. You know, it's just it's, it's it is conversation right. is what it is. But I think that. Even if, if it is where it's an eight and a four million, four million dollar difference, it's not really. I am sorry. It, yeah, she ain't sorry, sorry. at all. Mm-hmm. At all. <laughs> but Jen, since yeah. you're all about the coins and coin management, what do you think about that? Exactly. exactly. I, I am. And like, to me, I, I saw it as being very, very financially strategic on Beyonce's part. Um, Ariana Grande is still young. She's still working on her on her business side. She probably didn't really even know that that was an option for her. So she took the money, and I don't blame her. Like she's young. Take that. Take the eight million dollars or whatever. But for Beyonce, a she doesn't need the money. B it was smarter for her to say I'm gonna take less money and have more rights because I know because she has a vision I mean we've seen Beyonce grow over the last 10 years she has a vision so she knew that she was about to come out with something great and it was worth taking that cut and ultimately she's going to make way more money from it so it was a win-win it was smart all the way around absolutely all right everybody wins now let's talk about this 24-hour black hey, news channel. That would be like if you were to watch us all, all day, day long <laughs> and all night long. You go to bed with us, you, you wake, wake up, up with us, us, have lunch, a break, vacation. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a new 24-hour news channel that will debut in November. Um, I'm, I'm excited to see what it's about. I have a friend who's actually going to be a director of HBCU inclusion. So she'll hey. be providing opportunities for internships and, and job training, et cetera, for, for the network. Um, so, I mean, you know, I don't know a whole bunch about what they're going to be doing, but I'm looking forward to seeing what they're going to be doing um, and how this platform is going to be set up and what they're going to cover and if it's going to be authentic. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think um, for me, what I'm going to be looking for is like who is on the board of directors, you know, what right. they're like, uh, you know, what their staff is going to look like, you know, mm-hmm. like the ratio uh, between like, you know, producers and associate producers and writers, you know, as far as like who is truly being represented and where is all this money to fund this network coming from? I'll be hmm. interested in some that of that tea. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want, you know, I would hate for it to be like a front. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, that and we don't want to see it come and go very quickly. True. Kia? I'm all for this if it's done properly. Um, right. What they're going to have to do is lure at least one really top black anchor over to the show to kind of, you know, hold the reins of this. It would be amazing if they could get someone like a Don Lemon. I know the money might not be there, but I'm for this as long as it's done well. Because we all know, just like on this show, stuff goes left when it really should not go left. And we don't want to have that on a whole new network. <laughs> so I think it can be good, but it has to be done right. And it can't t- turn into... Black Fox News. It cannot turn into Black Fox News. I, I, I can't. I can't with that. True. Jen? Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, unfortunately, we don't get enough backing financially for these type of projects. Yep. And I am concerned that we're not going to get enough money to make it so that it comes out well. And, exactly. you know, some of us, I mean, all of us have been to those Black events where it's like, you can tell that they didn't have the money, so it's just not quite right. <laughs> so I'm, I'm concerned. Girl. Right, exactly. Like you show up and you're like, ooh, like 
Uh, that just happened to me a couple of days ago, so I so it's fresh in my mind. Like, oh, black people, black people. <laughs> Like, man, like we have to do better. We have to do better. We have to spend the money to make it a really well thought out production. Otherwise, it's just gonna turn ghetto. Like, and and and, and I'm worried about that. But if it doesn't, I'm all for it. Like, if we can show like like true black history, black news, things that most black people don't know, financial security, great. But it has to be done well. So we'll right. see. And th that just and it can, okay, real quick though, and it cannot my... be all liberal, and it cannot be all democratic. It has to be all political views. It can't just be the liberal side because another way it's just gonna tank downhill. Well, and and that's where we also have to have uh, some clarification because because news isn't democratic or republican. Uh, news is you know of course like if it's being presented by journalists, then it should be objective across the board mm -hmm. so that way Absolutely. you're just reporting on facts and the viewer uh is making his or her own, own decision unlike this show we are more of a fabulous glamorized opinion show <laughs> with some you know political directions yes. that are diverse that's within right. the staff yes that's right in the cast uh-huh and the opinions are our own okay this is <laughs> let's talk about and you know i'm all for my hbcus if I had to go to fam again, I would do it. There you go. Three, four times yes, over, girl. baby. Okay, because I had the best time. It was the they were the best years mm. of my life mm. in Tallahassee, Florida. Right. At Florida &M. So I'm all for there HBCU. You I'm all for dripping the HBCU Dripp, swag. Dripp, dripp. <laughs> Howard University mm. is is having some issues with yeah. the neighbors. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The neighbors seem to think it's okay to bring their dogs over there. And take a picnic if they like. Do some Pilates. Do some stuff. Pilates. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I just don't understand. Well, I'm kind of like, okay, first of all, the campus is absolutely gorgeous it and is. beautiful. It is. It is. And at first, like, I was kind of go, what, what is the issue, you know, if people are enjoying the park? Now, if they're, like, littering, not picking up after their pets and stuff like that, then I could be like, hey, wait a minute, that's not cool. But, but it's not a park. Okay, see, that's where I need some like clarification because I, yeah, it's not. A, it's yeah, a it's part not a of park. The so the difference between okay, yeah, so the difference between Fam and and Howard is a big difference. Howard, the park that these that, that everybody uses is actually surrounded by houses. At Fam, our university encloses everything we use. Correct. So if people really wanted to go to the park, the set, they would have to walk onto the campus. No, right. nobody's doing that. Right. Howard is not like that. So people from the neighborhood are coming on. And they aren't always picking up after themselves. That's one issue. And when your dog goes number one, how do you pick that up? But it does damage the grass when your dog goes number one in the grass. When there are picnics, some, yeah, they clean up, but not everything is picked up. And then the staff in the school is having to do that. It just, this is one of those problems of gentrification that I don't think anybody ever thought we were going to get to. Where now historical sites are now group community sites that aren't getting respected like they should a regular historical white site. And that's right. just that's a fact. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And look, if this was if this was Harvard University, and 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 the tables were turned, and these were black neighborhood people coming onto Harvard doing that, like there would be no question that it would be unacceptable. Absolutely. And, and the fact that one of the neighbors said, "Oh, well, why don't they just move the university?" Girl, that, um, that entitlement, I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, that was, I saw it, it, that. I was Keisha's like, right. Hey. Keisha's right. That is straight up entitlement. How are we, how are we moving a 182-year-old, 152-year-old university? Like, how how does that work? Right. right. Yeah. Because yeah. you want yeah. to move next door. Only, they would only say that because it's a historically black university. This would, we, this would be unheard of in any other school. Period. Hands down. There's no question about it. So it's just completely, you know, disrespectful. And let's be honest. We need Howard needs to start doing what FAM does and what what FSU's been doing. What Harvard, Princeton do. Put a fence up. This yeah. is our property. We're gonna put a fence up around this and make it only accessible to students. And now you guys have nothing. You, you can't get to it. Now what? Now what? There you yeah. go. Yeah. If you can't respect it, don't come to it. Yeah, and I know, that, I know the community is trying to avoid the fence, but at this point, if you think that our school can just be picked up and moved, then we'll get a fence. Move that. How about that? Right, right. Have your dog climb that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just 
say it. <laughs> well, they got to get. So dogs can jump fences. I know, but they won't jump that one. Wow. Okay. Hmm. Well, let's keep it that moving. Woo. I just, All right. That's not going to be the end of that. Beyonce. Her and, live album and Madonna. And Madonna. Let's talk. Let's have this conversation. First of all, let me tell you about Beyonce's live album that just had me <laughs> ready. Yeah. She got me ready for homecoming. Yeah. If you have not attended an HBCU, an HBCU's homecoming, I implore you, do that. A, do a favor for yourself, for your soul, for your spirit. It's something that you will never forget, and it'll make you rethink your whole college life and decisions. Okay, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I, I watched the documentary, right? And the thing is, what I honor and love the most mm-hmm. about Beyonce is that, you know, she is a pupil of these icons that came out of the 80s and mastering herself as an artist yeah. and entertainer and a brand. You know, right. she's thinking on that level. Yeah. But on the flip, what I thought was super outstanding mm-hmm. is that it was actually trending on Twitter mm-hmm. that it was like, Bay Day on Xmas Day, which means that you have Madonna and you have Beyonce, huge pop icons, yeah. entertainers, women releasing music on the same day, yeah. and instead of them being pitted against each other, like Twitter was celebrating it, yeah. and I was too. I was popping all kinds of bottles. Yeah, <laughs> one time, one time for the ladies doing their thing. Kia, I know. You, look, that's my fellow rattler, so she understands all. Of my drama, my uh, dramatic expressions of appreciation. I absolutely and gratitude. do. And let me point something out. The reason why I haven't watched Homecoming on Netflix by Beyonce for two specific reasons. I went to an HBCU. Stop looking at me like that, Shillette. And also, I already know that Beyonce is amazing. There's really nothing else I need to understand. But I'm, I'm good. <laughs> but Stop hating and watch the video. Watch the damn <laughs> documentary. <laughs> these two women are icons. I think it's amazing. I didn't know Madonna was still dropping music. Because I heard she was going through a custody battle, but you didn't hear that from me. So, you know what? Yay, so everybody. Crazy. It's wonderful. <laughs> now, Jen, you, you're not yeah. an HBCU grad, right? I am not. Um, I am not, although I wish that I had known and had taken the opportunity, but I grew up in a small, predominantly white town, mm-hmm. and I was not guided in that direction. Um, but looking back and, and, and after watching Homecoming, you know how jealous I was? <laughs> <laughs> you should be. Girl, you should be. If you yes. I, I'm gonna take you. I feel like me and Keisha, we all as a group need to go to Family's Homecoming. Yes. That'll be the monkey in the morning. Oh group trip. You know, you know, so I'm down for homecoming. Show. Oh my god. So all of you all can get the experience that me and Keisha had that was unforgettable. We not going to Gillette School because she went to UF, like they don't do it like we do it. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it, well, it, like, no, like, she wasn't going to be, I'm she totally wasn't here down. for the pettiness totally. today, you know. <laughs> Don't make me flip this camera around. Ooh, <laughs> and the producer speaks. <laughs> <laughs> they got a little black student union, you know, Ooh. but it ain't, it ain't the HBCU experience ever. Ooh, let's, but, not, let's not bring the nights up into this Okay, now. listen. Ooh, this, look, this, US, this UCF <laughs> night. Listen. Kia, yeah, I think that's the best way. best idea ever. We should definitely we do the should field totally. trip I'm all for family's it. homecoming. We should get like a Winnebago. I don't know about that. And I like, step with some <laughs> snacks. Hey, God, and, and truth be told, like I've been married, I've been with my husband for four years. I have not taken him. I don't think he can handle that much black in one place. Like he's oh always like, well, you I always could, talk about I how funny it is. Like you, you are, are going to take your husband. Though. Yes. Huh? We're take. Yes, you're taking your husband. <laughs> this is the year. Let's do it. I'm so excited about it. Yes. I'm so excited about it. Yes. Okay. I, oh my god. It's gonna be fun. Get You're gonna be the, on overwhelmed. Field. Oh yeah, yes. we can do that. That's easy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Avengers. <gasps> Before uh, we get to Avengers, though. Oh what? Oh, you didn't watch Game of Thrones, did you? You know I didn't watch. Oh, okay, it. We'll, we'll keep it moving. <laughs> <laughs> He's so shady. No, I'm not. Okay, <laughs> Avengers. Talk about that. Now, my sister mm. and my best friend Miranda. Yes. Okay. They always pick on me because they're like, we're not taking you to the movies to see any of the Marvel movies because you're not excited like we are. Mm-hmm. And they don't. They okay. literally go on to the movies without me. And I'm like, I want to see it. Okay. But I saw the, com- you know, I want to see this one. This is like, okay. I saw the previews and For, it looks fab. Like, I'm not going to say whether or not I have seen it already. <gasps> 
Um, but what I will say is that, you know, it's very emotional. Is it? Because it's the end game. Wow. Oh and <laughs> that means it's a wrap. It's a wrap. And, uh, oh, like, uh, what's the little clip? What's this little clip? I'm just, I'm just like, I'm just not ready to like to let, let it go. go. Mm, <laughs> take a look. This is the fight of our lives. This is gonna work, Steve. I know it is. Because I don't know what I'm gonna do if it doesn't. Her we garage are is. Oh yeah, that's She's right. She's in a man cave. Marvel household. We're a Marvel household. Like if you looked at my husband's garage for Christmas, it's all marbled out. The whole thing, our washer and dryer, everything is marble. Everything. He's got a comic book collection. I cannot wait to go see this, but I'm annoyed because my husband's out of town on a, a car show trip, and I can't see it until he gets back. And oh, I'm, I'm ooh, like dying on the inside. I have to avoid Twitter. Rules. I have to avoid everything until he gets back so I can watch the movie. Ugh. Oh, you better not cheat and go see it. Yeah, I'm not gonna tell you anything about it. <laughs> Jen, what about you? Look, I I have always been a superhero fan, whether it's DC or Marvel, so I don't discriminate. I love, I watch them the minute they come out. Um, I actually haven't seen it yet, but um, I'm going to be in Denver, and I think I'm going to check it out while I'm in Denver um, and just, you know, go, just go by myself because, you know, we can't go together as black people because y'all, everybody. <laughs> Oh, oh, Lord. I mean, come on, honestly. Oh, too much blame yes. for the movie theater? <laughs> yes. I want to go by myself so I can just take it all in. So I think I'm going to do that next weekend. So I'm also avoiding seeing um, Facebook because I don't want to see what happened yet. And I'm, I'm super excited. It's going to be really bad. Listen, Jen, let me tell y'all something. First of all, about this, you can't go with black people. Listen, you can't. <laughs> For an Avengers movie, you can. Now, if it was a Tyler Perry film <laughs> or something like that, then you ain't going to be able to hear half the movie because they laugh it. But, I mean, for the Avengers, I should say. You're right. All right. Yeah. Thank you, no, Jen. No. Thank you, Kia. But listen, though, I was going to say that. Bye, guys. Any opportunity to see, like, uh, muscly mans and, like, fabulous women in any kind of color tights, I'm, I'm going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, ladies. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with this week's Mocha Moment. <laughs> For real, it's flying through the air, got powers and stuff. our mocha moment for the week. If you have pictures, videos, or anything like that with your family, your friends, doing something really special and positive, we'd love to feature it as our mocha moment. Yes, whatever, any opening of that. business. All of that. We want to see it and share it with our audience here on Mocha in the Morning. So make sure you send it to us. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff. Uh, YouTube at Mocha in the Morning, a Mocha Morning Show. And uh, we appreciate you. Take a look at this moment. And what Keisha's not doing is actually sharing with all of you how special this mocha moment is. So Keisha, why don't you tell us how special this mocha moment is? So this mocha moment is special to me because it's me and my grandmother who recently had a stroke mm -hmm. um, and she wasn't able to talk, walk, or, or anything. And the doctors were not so encouraging, but right. I, I believe in a God mm -hmm. and I, I, I'm faithful. And this moment, just shows, she's talking to me and playing with my hair. Ooh. And, you know, it was just a moment that I wanted to share with you all to, st to stay faithful. Um, our families mean everything to us, and it's important that we spend time and support them. So this is this week's Mocha there Moment, me and my grandma. And you're a family, too. Yes. And it's just not a moment. It's a Mocha Moment. Yes. <laughs> Black in the Bay and Next Level Entertainment present the 5th Annual Derby Delight, an evening of style, grace, and class featuring live music from Marlon Boone and the City Group Trio, a fashion show starring you, our guest, a cigar lounge, derby bites, and more. So join us at the beautiful Jackson's Waterfront Room in downtown Tampa on Sunday, May 5th from 5 to 8 p.m. 
Get your tickets now at www.blackinthebay.com. Mocha moment. We're so happy that you joined us for this week's Mocha in the Morning show. Once again, I'm Keisha Boyd, your host. This is Official Jorge. This has been our show. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Mocha Morning Show, or at Mocha Morning Show. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Come on. Have a Adios. great weekend.